I've already had, went ahead and weighed a flask that we're going to put, collect our sample in. And the weight of that flask is 27.067 grams. And what I'm going to do is we've got our cotton plug. That's a great way to filter something. And it typically doesn't take a long period of time. I'm going to take the material here and then filter it through that cotton plug. containing the, um, the two, uh, chloro 2 methyl butane that we just made and it weighed 37, excuse me, 34.760 grams, 34.760 grams. Ideally, what would be great is to distill this, uh, do a simple distillation to make sure that we isolated pure product. We have such a small amount that I'm a little skeptical of going through that simple distillation. I don't think we will get very much. I think a lot will be still trapped within the condenser and even in the steel pot. So we're going to omit the simple distillation. And I will say this, that if we wanted this to be pure for anal um, analysis or we wanted to use this compound in another reaction and it really needed to be pure, then we would try to take the time to do that simple distillation, albeit we're going to lose the material in doing so. So our goal today is, is just to see if we were successful in producing the 2-chloro-2-methylbutane. Did we replace the OH group of the alcohol with the chlorine by that SN1 mechanism? So there's a couple of chemical tests that we're going to do. Uh, one of these tests is called the uh, sodium iodide acetone test and what that particular test does is to pick up uh, what type of alkyl halide do you have? Do you have primary, secondary, or tertiary? So basically what we'll do is we'll take some of this reagent, place into a test tube, add a couple drops of our uh, organic product and we're looking for a precipitate or not, depending on what classification we have. Usually if you have a primary or secondary substrate, and usually bromides are better leaving groups than chlorides, those typically react before heating. Um, tertiary substrates really do not react uh, even after heating them about five minutes. So we're gonna add um, a couple milliliters of the uh, reagent, the sodium iodide acetone. We'll add a couple drops of our product we just collected. We'll stir that into a test tube. If nothing happens, then we'll place that into a hot water bath and see if anything happens at that point. This is our reagent, the sodium iodide dissolved in acetone. And then to that, I'm gonna add a couple drops of our product. And then we wanna stir that. I'm gonna stir that with the stirring rod. And then we'll let that sit for a few minutes at room temperature. And if nothing precipitates within about five minutes, then we're gonna place it into the hot water bath and see if it, anything will precipitate here. What we're looking for in this case is no precipitate because if we have no precipitate, then that tells us that we have a tertiary substrate, and that's what we were trying to make. It's been close to about five minutes, so I'm gonna go ahead and lower it into the uh, warm water bath. This is around 50 degrees, and again, with this particular test, we do not wanna see any change. We don't wanna see any precipitate form, because if we do, then that means we did not form that tertiary alkyl halide. And that was the whole purpose of this experiment. So we'll let that sit there for about five minutes, and then we'll come take a look at that. As you can see, it's been five minutes heating in the uh, warm water bath of about 50 degrees. 
There is no change in the test tube. There's no precipitate form, which is exactly what we wanted to see, no precipitate, because what that tells us is that our substrate was tertiary. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna do another chemical test that will hopefully tell us what type of halide ion do we have. So um, we're gonna use this reagent silver nitrate and ethanol and we're gonna put about two mils of that into a, a test tube and then we'll add a couple drops of our sample in there. And what we're looking for is a precipitate fairly quickly. Um, and we're looking at, the, there's several halogens you can have, the chlorides, the bromides, or the iodides. If chloride is present, then it should form more of a white precipitate. If bromine is present, it's more of a pale yellow. If iodine is present, then it's more of a darker yellow color. Well, obviously if we use hydrochloric acid, we should be able to see a white precipitate. So we'll go ahead and do that test. We're gonna put about two mils of the silver nitrate reagent. So into another clean test tube, we're gonna put two mils of our silver nitrate. It does have kind of a dingy color associated with it. And then we're gonna add a couple drops of our reagent, or our organic product that we collected. And notice we formed a white precipitate almost instantaneously. So there's no reason to heat this. If no solid form, then typically you would heat this for a few minutes at the bowl. Uh, but since we've got the white precipitate, then there's no reason to heat that. The other thing we could do is that if we now were to treat what we have in here with nitric acid, uh, typically were silver halides and what we formed was silver chloride in this reaction, this chemical test. If we add nitric acid to that and um, if it doesn't dissolve, then that's reinforcing that yes, we do have silver chloride here which means we had a chlorine atom within our product. So I'm gonna add a couple drops of nitric acid. And again, in this case, we don't want anything to dissolve. We still want it to be a precipitate. You just need a couple drops. And we'll mix that up. And if you notice, you can really see that white precipitate kind of going down to the bottom. Now it may happen that if you let this sit out in light, that white solid may actually start taking on kind of a light violet color. That's just the interaction with light. But we certainly can see that we've got a white solid here, which means that we had chlorine in our molecule. The last thing that we need to do obviously is to take care of the waste and just to kind of go through that the organic material uh, since that does have a halogen in it we have to dispose of that in the halogenated container uh, the aqueous acid that we collected at the beginning we want to make sure we neutralize that with some sodium carbonate the other aqueous substances the sodium chloride the sodium bicarbonate and the water we can combine with those and typically we can put those down the drain because there's nothing that should be in with those. 